The first elected and first black mayor in New Bern, Alabama, has not been able to carry out his duties leaving the town because white folks there have blocked him from taking his seat for three years. Patrick Braxton assumed office by default in 2020 when he filed for office, and no one else, including the incumbent, did the same. Previous newborn mayors had been appointed or ran unopposed, with several serving for more than 10 years. Many residents did not know they were even allowed to have elections. Seriously, Braxton has an ongoing lawsuit alleging the white town leaders arrange an illegal and secret special election preventing Braxton from appointing a majority black town council and New Bern voters from electing their candidates of choice. And New Bern is about 77 miles southwest of Birmingham and its population is 80% black, 20% white. However, the town's leadership, except for Braxton and his town council, has been majority white for years. The Legal Defense Fund has filed a preliminary injunction to force New Bern to hold elections and to allow its citizens to vote for the first time in years. <sighs> My goodness, this is... Okay, so I know somebody's watching me right now, and you're saying y'all have got to be kidding. But remember what happened in Ferguson. Same thing, 6-7% black, and for the longest they didn't have a black mayor. You often see this happen in these small towns in Alabama and Mississippi. And so we must understand this is a reality. Marinika uh, Fujani joins us right now, special counsel of the LDF. Uh, she's been working on this. Okay, so, 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 so walk us through this. Walk us through this. Um, when is the last time they actually had an election? So as we understand it, the town of New Bern has not had elections since at least the last few decades. They may not have ever had elections before the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965. The last few decades? That's right. What the like what what the hell do the people there not get news where they see elections happening everywhere else? And no one said, hey, um, what about us? So what's been happening is that different white residents of the town have been appointing themselves and other white residents that they know to the positions of town council member and mayor. And it's been essentially a hand-me-down governance system for the past several decades. So... Nobody black said anything. No one. I, I'm I'm baffled that you could have a majority black town and literally this just went on and it was OK. I, I think it is hard to wrap your mind around in terms of why before 2020, when Patrick Braxton decided to run for mayor, why did that happen previously? But. That just hasn't been the practice. That hasn't been the history. And also remember that this town is quite segregated. So the black people in the town live in a different part of town and they have basically tended to take care for, of themselves um, by themselves without help of the official town governance. So, I mean, I, I get segregation. OK, so so all of a sudden, um, no one decides to run. So Patrick goes, hey, I'm going to run. And what? They just said, nope, <laughs> you're not going to be the mayor. I mean, how, how, first of all, how does the state attorney general allow this to happen? I think that's a really good question. I think it that's where things really start to get complicated when Patrick Braxton decided to run for mayor. Um, at first, the outgoing mayor did not give him the proper information to qualify for a candidate of mayor, but Mr. Braxton was very intent on running and did the research that he needed to do so that he could still qualify. Um, and then I think the problems really began not only after he decided to run, but it was really after he recruited 
other residents and then it was only black residents who decided to serve on his town council that the outgoing white power structure decided that they wanted to put a stop to that. How, how large is, I mean, how large is this, is this town's budget? Uh, what do they actually control? Uh, what are they in charge of? Well, New Bern is quite a small town that probably has between 200 to about 350 residents. Um, there's the you know, town post office. There's a town hall. Um, there are a few other municipal buildings, but it's really quite it's quite small. So I don't actually think that this dispute is about getting a lot of access to town funds. It seemed to be more about holding on to those um, vestiges of power and trying to maintain that white dominated town governance. So since this happened, I mean, have the black folks there woken up? Have they said have they realized that, man, we've been getting screwed all these years and we now want justice? We want this to be done the right way? I think since Mayor Braxton decided to run, since he recruited his town council members, since all of the media attention and the lawsuit, I think it has really changed the conversations that are happening in the town of New Bern. And it's making the residents really think about, for the first time, having a town government that serves them. So where do we stand right now? I mean, is Braxton, is, is he in office? What's going on? Where we stand right now is that who the lawful mayor is and who the town council is, is in dispute. And it's really what the, the centerpiece of the lawsuit is. And we have a hearing on May 6th that is really going to go to the core of determining who the right mayor and town council should be and also making the town of New Bern hold elections. Is this in state court? Is this in federal court? That's in federal court in the Southern District of Alabama. Uh, have y'all heard anything from the state? Mm. From the town defendant? No, or no, no. From, from state secretary of state, from state attorney general, from the governor. No. Uh, is there a, I mean, where New, New Bern is, is are, I'm sure there's a county government there. Uh, so any of the county officials, uh, have your, how about the state rep or the state senator, the member of Congress that represents that area? Anything? They haven't been in touch with the Legal Defense Fund, but maybe they've been in touch um, with Mayor Bra Braxton directly. Wow. I, I'm just, I mean, it, it is just stunning that we can be in 2024 and these folks, uh, they're located in, in, you know, in the black belt, are still trying to actually elect their own mayor. In leadership. I absolutely. That's that's just wild. Uh, so you said the hearing is May sixth. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. All right. Well, we certainly will be paying attention to see what happens. Thank you. All right. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Uh, Matt Manning, civil rights attorney out of Corpus Christi. He joins us. Uh, also, Caleb Athea, communication strategist, uh, joins us as well. Michael M. Hotel hosts the African History Network show out of Detroit. Matt, this is absolutely crazy, bro. This, uh, this is insane. Yeah, this is not only insane. I thought that there had to be some weird issue with the maybe city uh, ordinances or the codes. So actually, while you were speaking with the attorney, I read the Alabama law because I was just confused. And, and basically, you know, in most states, they have a whole section of law that um, that relates to municipalities and corporations and basically how cities and towns are incorporated and what their powers are, all of that. So newborn would be a class eight municipality in the city, in the uh, state of Alabama. And the reason I mention that is because oftentimes there's a, there are gaps when they're very small cities and towns in terms of their ability to just govern themselves. So I thought maybe they had some kind of weird law that allowed the mayor to appoint everybody on the city council and some of the stuff I read in advance of this segment. But getting down to it, this is out and out racism and out and out preservation of power because the Alabama codes, as it relates to even class eight municipalities, talks all up and through about elections. So the fact that there haven't been elections here, um, I think is proof positive that there's clearly been 
a very caustic power dynamic. And there's been a power dynamic where even among 350 some odd people, the black people there have been cordoned off and been rendered unable to uh, participate fully in their democracy. So I'm hoping that the federal judge sees this as just a per se, you are being divested of your 15th Amendment right to vote. You're being divested of your right to be a fully participative citizen. And hopefully uh, he or she, you know, not only issues the injunction, but make sure that the people of Newborn actually get to have a voice. Uh, this is just this is crazy, Kelly. Just crazy. It, it's crazy, but it's also really fascinating to me because after, you know, listening to um, the LDS attorney or representative, rather, I am now curious to know exactly how many other municipalities are in this exact same situation in that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of small towns just like New Bern, Alabama, and um, certainly throughout the South. I wonder just how many are in a similar or exact same predicament in that there are no elections because the town is so small. And, um, you know, I'm assuming the demographic is relatively older, usually small towns of this size. We're talking about people who have been there their entire lives, don't really, you know, venture out and then come back. We're talking about people who have been there and have stayed there their entire lives. Um, residents who, you know, are pretty much used to how things are and aren't necessarily exposed to how, um, things can be or are currently in the rest of the state, rest of the country, and and beyond. So I think certainly the the white residents of New Bern know and take advantage of that. And not only is that disgraceful, I think it really does need to be explored by the DOJ because this is, in my opinion, an even bigger issue. Michael. Yeah, Roland, I know some people uh, act surprised by this, but uh, this doesn't surprise me at all, especially if you understand the history of Alabama. No, um, you look at the Alabama State Constitution in 1901, okay, that codified white supremacy. And that's not me saying that. That's the Encyclopedia of Alabama. When you go research it, they instituted poll taxes and literacy tests to suppress the African-American vote. When you go back and look at the lawsuit of Gomillion versus Lightfoot, 1961, this was to fight against the gerrymandering that the state of Alabama was doing in Tuskegee, Alabama, and locking out almost all of the African-American voters and, and bringing in uh, to this district uh, poor white voters and Tuskegee, Alabama had a higher literacy rate than the surrounding white counties, largely because of Tuskegee Institute. But, but, but Michael, just, but, but Michael, Michael yeah. no, I mean, first of all, we, you go through you go through the civil rights movement, the black freedom movement. You got a, you got what happened in Selma. You got what happened in Birmingham. You get the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Uh, They're only 77 miles from Birmingham. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little surprised you don't have an election since 1965. I mean, I, I well. I mean, that's, that's, we ain't say 1985, 1995, yeah. 1965. Well, Roland, January 6, 2021, you had a group of domestic terrorists to try to throw over, overthrow the no, government. No, no, I, I, I understand that. But an 80% black town, 20% white, not having an election since the 60s. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, I, I, in, in, that's, that's, that's still shocking. I'm not, I'm not saying it's right. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. If, I'm saying. If, I'm saying again. What? There's no news that is that. This is sort of like uh, the Japanese soldier, you know, who they found 30 years later uh, didn't realize the war was over. I, I, I just don't understand what, how, it, how how people living in this town got no news about any election anywhere else in the country and was like, Damn, you know, we ain't had one since '60 something. I'm just, uh, just uh, saying. Very quickly here, uh, the, one of the points I've made before numerous times on this show is oftentimes white people will value our vote and fear our vote more so than we will. OK, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to condemn anybody in this town. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying white people fear the African-American vote. And in the words of, Dr., uh, of the great master teacher, historian Dr. John Henry Clark, he would say, I'm surprised that you're surprised. Uh, this does not surprise I, me. I, it, it's uh, since, since the 60s, yeah, it surprises me. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. 
This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.